Parasite the Maxim, Full Anime Review I can often struggle to find the time to watch older shows due to consistently following the seasonals. I finally got around to watching Parasite the Maxim, and I absolutely loved it. This is a thoroughly engaging and thought-provoking story from beginning to end. It was hard to get myself to stop watching so I could spread it out, so there will be very heavy spoilers. Parasite excels on every front. It shows a suspenseful thrill ride from beginning to end. There were so many sun and oh crap moments that made me terrified for what was about to come next. The way the plot flows feels very natural and logical. The characters are very nuanced and always changing. The story is super interesting, but I always get excited when the action picks up again due to how well done they are. I do think the peak of the show is in the middle, surrounding the scene of Tomura's death, but all the way through it is thoroughly engaging and thought-provoking. The scene in the park was utter perfection, a beautiful and emotional culmination of everything the series was building to at that point. Everything concerning Tomura is fantastic, she's such a rich character. The entire story is rich with detail. The production value is extremely great as well, featuring smooth animation and great attention to minor details that add more to the scene. The character animation is so good, with lots of small and or short movements or extra details in expressions that accentuate the character's emotional state. The biological angle of the show is super, super interesting. I love the level of detail we get into how the parasites work. Every time they took the, t the time to explain how the parasites work, I, hap I happily devoured every little detail. And the time and level of detail is justified because they end up being relevant again to the plot and in the fights. You get satisfaction from paying attention because you understand why things work or don't. It's not just mindless repetitive details just for the sake of padding out the wrong time. I love when we get to learn more about the unique organisms, organisms in fantasy and science fiction, and Parasite satisfied me perfectly on this front. A big focus of the show is on change, particularly adaptation and evolution. I love that Shinichi's growth as a character was not a simple downward slope. He has ups and downs, going back and forth on believing in different ideas and perspectives. One point I love is how long it took for him to recognize that he was changing. Noticing yourself changing is pretty difficult. People can overestimate the self-awareness an individual has toward their own behavior. You often do need someone else telling you that you're changing, and a serious low point for improvement It's for in order for something to truly happen. We see this play out with his tumultuous relationship with Satomi. His failure to open up to her at the park was so painful. She's continuously falling for much of the series, but we see moments of self-realization and try to fight against it, as well as giving in. It's like a seesaw. He may have lost a lot of his emotional responses, but he did still have very strong responses to the topic of his mother. Then he later regained these more stronger emotions. In the end, he becomes not necessarily a perfect person, but a more complex person who can view life from a, different per from a better perspective. It hurts so much to see him struggle because of how real he felt as a character. We also have Migi, who ends up being a very dynamic character. He starts out as being entirely utilitarian and self-serving. His Rationality reacting to, to Shinichi's quote-unquote irrationality is very engaging and interesting to follow as a main duo. But over time, we see him better understand Shinichi and humans. He goes from demanding Shinichi do what he thinks is objectively best to trying to do the best he can while working within Shinichi's boundaries. He even learns to have a decent understanding of human ideals. The relationship between him and Migi is a dense, swinging pendulum of camaraderie and antagonism that ends in mutual understanding while still recognizing the differences between them. Watching the parasites evolve over the course of the story was so engrossing. Them slowly becoming more like humans is amazing to watch, especially when it's contrasted with the way we see Shinichi become less human. We see parasites go from simple-minded predators to developing individuality. That's just like so interesting. The way they copy humans to the point of developing individuality and forming an organization which leads to their downfall is just perfect. This duality is so engaging. Migi's desire for learning is my favorite trait of his, and it ended with him trying to evolve into something truly unique. And I think that's perfect and fits the theme of individuality between all creatures very well. I loved watching him evolve over the course of the story, and the parasites as a whole. I've heard some criticisms of the story with a segment that leads to Kana's death. Yes, Kana was very stupid for leaving her phone behind, but I think it works for her character. It felt in line for a high school girl who desperately wanted connection and to chase the strong feelings that she's never felt before. 
She wanted to feel special and believed in the romanticized idea of the faded lover that media often portrays. She believed in Shinichi being her faded love so strongly that she was willing to risk being wrong. These are all understandable desires, especially for someone her age. I remember thinking similarly when I was her age. And even if you didn't think this way, this shows how people have different belief systems and do not live entirely based on rationality. Which clearly this idea very fit, very well fits into the show's overall themes. Her death is very important to the story, and I think the way her death comes about is very well written. I think she was a great character, and I have no personal issues with how her story goes. Difference in perspective is also a big point of the series. Migi and Shinichi see life and other creatures in different ways, but both are presented as valid perspectives. You should seek to understand other people's viewpoints, but expecting to entirely understand is just not possible, as your experiences can never truly be the same. This is not posited as being negative, and I agree. It's just the reality of existence. I agree that there is arrogance to believing that you can understand how other people feel. Assuming other people's perspective can bring a lot of harm. We can be empathetic and do our best to act on their perspectives, but you'll never, never truly have the same perspective as someone else. Every creature is unique, based on their own individual differences. We should respect each other's independence and uniqueness as living beings. A single actor cannot represent an entire race, or species. Migi and Shinichi both desired to understand each other, and this is what allowed them to, exceed, to succeed in the story, while parasites like Goto forced their will onto others and failed because of it. This show brings up so many great philosophical questions. They confirmed par parasites can live without humans, as they can survive on the normal human diet which is how you can contextualize their killing of humans is wrong. But humans can survive without eating animals. So are we wrong for killing animals when we don't need to? Should causing the death and or suffering of one organism be treated differently than another? You could think it's wrong that Tomura viewed her human child like an experiment. But do humans not conduct experiments on animals? Is it so different from a parasite experimenting on humans? What about humans experimenting on Tomura's child? Is there much of a difference between a creature like a parasite that kills humans and a serial killer? Can different creatures truly understand one another? Are all living creatures not doing their best to survive and thrive? Do all living things not have the right to live? They were born into this world with desires the same as us. They search for purpose the same way humans do. Should we judge all creatures based on human values? There are plenty of series that explore human nature, but many lack the nuance and good writing that Parasite has in my opinion. My point being that the humans here are not ridiculously stupid and unrealistically vile. There is not a single time I felt the intelligence of human characters were degraded for the sake of the plot or just to make a point. Even during moments of arguable immorality, like the soldiers killing humans, had a clear utilitarian basis. In other words, shows, you have people killing others for no good reason, just to make the point of humans, humans bad, humans are cruel. We do have a truly cruel human in Uragami, but he serves a clear narrative and thematic purpose. I think there's a lot of value to his inclusion as a human antagonistic force. While people like him are the vast minority of humans, they do exist. He acts a lot like the parasites as a predator. He brings up the point that stepping over others is the natural order of things, quote unquote, that humanity has lost. The last plot line is a reminder of how cruel humans can be, and that being more compassionate to others is the best way to go. There are some points that, can, that you can argue that thinking selfishly is not wrong, but this segment makes it clear that selfishness to the, to the degree that he promotes is wrong. The story was not about some human threat to society, with humans being innocent victims. The final confrontation was around him and her because of the themes of love and human capabilities. He is the more pu pure human heart of the series. Amongst the chaos of the parasite stuff, she keeps the story grounded. She represents the noble and caring side of humanity, while he portrays the dark side. And through love, through love, the positive side of humanity is shown. Their relationship shows the importance of love and humanity. We succeed through our connections. The connection between Shinichi and Migi that was unique to them is what allowed Migi to evolve further 
that we see his character end with pursuing. Earlier in the, in the series, they state that creatures like the parasites should all act similarly based on their shared directive, but we see this end up not being true. Because creatures do not have some singular directive that dictates their behavior and makes them all the same. Creatures across the scale of simple to complex are unique. Shinichi is truly able to grow as a person and regain his will to live through his relationship with Satomi. The love gets more into the point about how your close relationships should be a main focus as an individual, rather than looking entirely from a collectivist perspective. The right spot is right in the middle, according to the series. Is my interpretation of it. By the end, the show is clear in criticizing humanity because of the negative impact it has had on the planet. But where it differs from other perspectives is following that up with whether something being harmful not necessarily meaning that it should die or not exist. Both sides in the human versus parasite war wanted to protect their own interest and projected their value onto others. Because you have to look from different perspectives. As Migi says, do we have the right to say that we're doing something for Earth, quote unquote, when it is not a living being that you can attach values to? It's very interesting that Shinichi changes his mind from letting him live to killing him. He goes from believing he has the right to live, that he should let nature take its course, but then flips to deciding that, that he needs to kill him in order to ensure him and his family's safety. He goes from acting from a macro perspective to more of a micro perspective. And is the show saying this is how we should think? Do the best you can for the people around you rather than attempting to act on what is best for the collective? In the end, are we not all acting in our own self-interest at its core? This fits with that one bio biology lecture that was in the show, where the debate about whether things can truly act outside of self-interest is a thing or not. It is important to consider the environment but a lone person should not overestimate their ability to alter it. There is a criticism of humanity, but it clearly states that feeling terrible about, about ourselves as humans is not the message. This is clearly shown through how Takeshi is portrayed, with him being an environmental terrorist who says humanity should be diminished. I do believe that as humans we should be a lot better to ourselves, each other, and our world. But we are all just trying to live in the system that we are born into. Our world does not allow up allow us to better ourselves with absolutely no consequences to others. And allowing humans to die on purpose is not the solution. We should love ourselves while also seeking to improve. As the old lady said, be flexible and never give up. This show is fantastic and one of my favorites that I've watched in a long time. It is just that good. There's so much worth talking about that I did not even get into. But I'm no perfect creature, so I cannot single-handedly represent everything in the story. And that's fine. There are plenty of other unique perspectives to read or hear. Briefly to add yours in the comments. Thank you for listening.